Hey everyone, I'm building an entire first-person shooter game from scratch in the Gato engine and documenting the progress with these tutorials. In this video, we're adding a sliding mechanic for when we crouch while sprinting. The basic FPS controller project from episode one is available for free on GitHub. And if you would like to use the written version of this tutorial or download all of the source files, you can get access by joining my Patreon. Let's dive in. To create our new sliding mechanic, we're going to add another state to our movement state machine. This new sliding state will occur when the player crouches while in the sprinting state. The player will crouch while reducing speed from a sprint to a crouch, then transition to the crouching state. After creating our new state child node and attaching a new sliding player state script, let's take a look at our script. We set our new class name and extend our player movement state script we've set up in an earlier episode. We'll then have our four export variables like we do in other states. Speed, acceleration, deceleration, and tilt amount, which will be our base camera tilt, and our sliding animation speed multiplier. Then we're going to grab a reference to our shapecast 3D node. We're making a change to our state machine setup by adding a parameter to our enter function, so we can check what state we're actually coming from. This will be important in a minute. To do this, we add the parameter to each state we've created. Then in our state machine, we pass our current state variable when we run our enter function on our new state. With our new parameter set, we'll continue our sliding state script. When we enter our sliding state, we'll run the set tilt function and pass the current Y rotation of our player using the class variable we created in a previous episode. For this, we'll need to head to our player script to create a new variable. In the player script, we add a current rotation variable. Then in our update camera function, we set that variable to equal the rotation of our input. We could use the rotation input directly, but we're resetting it each frame. So it ends up just equaling zero. Now in our sliding state script, we can use that new variable to get the current Y rotation of our player. This function will tilt the camera in the horizontal direction that the player is going. So sliding while turning left will tilt the camera to the left and vice versa and the amount of tilt will depend on the amount of rotation. Let's check that tilt function below. We pass our player rotation in a parameter, then create a new variable tilt set to zero. Then we set the Z value of our vector to equal our base tilt amount times our player rotation clamps between negative 0.1 and 0.1. We can also check if tilt equals zero and add some minimal tilt as a fallback. Then we'll adjust keyframes within our sliding animation using our tilt value. We don't have an animation yet, so we'll come back to these two lines a little bit later. Back in our inner function, after we set our tilt, we'll also adjust the keyframe for our speed and our animation, because we'll want to start our speed at our current speed, then slow down from there. Then we force a reset of the animation speed scale to one, just as a precaution, and we'll play our sliding animation. In our update function, we run our update gravity and velocity functions. You can also run your input function if you want to be able to move while you slide, or for my example, not run it. So once the player slides, they're locked in that direction and can look around and aim. The finish function will run once our animation is, well, finished, and we'll transition to the crouching player state where we'll run our uncrouch check as usual. Before we wrap up the script, let's create our animation. First, we create a new animation in our animation player node called sliding. I've created nine different tracks using the following nodes and properties. There isn't a super great way to pass this information along, so I'm gonna try to walk through each track. For our collision shape 3D, we're adjusting our collision heights and position like we do in our crouch animation. The height has a key at zero seconds with a value of two meters and one second with a value of 1.5 meters. The position goes from a Y value of one at zero seconds to a value of 0 0.75 at one second. Then we shift our camera controller down using position and adjust its rotation for our sliding tilt. Position keys at zero and one seconds going from Y equals 1.5 meters to one meter. And our rotation has keys at zero, 0 0.5, three and 4.9. Values can actually stay zero here because we're gonna be setting them within our script. Our Shapecast 3D node will adjust its position at zero and one second, going from 1.5 meters to one meter. Then we animate the speed value in our sliding player state node. 
we'll add a keyframe at one second and five seconds with values of six and four. But we're actually going to reset that first value via script as well. Then we add a method track to run our finish function at the very end of our animation. Finally, we'll add some juice by altering the field of view for our camera with keys at 0, 0 0.3, and 4.3. Going from 75 FOV or whatever your default is to 84, then back to the default. Feel free to adjust to your needs. Now back in our script, we can finish our track set key value functions. Each time we need the track index, the key index, and the value we want to set. To find the track index, you can use the track get path function and an index number to print and check which track goes with which index. Though it should be the order you created your tracks with zero being the first track. The key index should be left to right with the first being zero. For me, my values ended up being this. And that's our sliding state. Now we just need to adjust our other states so we can transition between them. We'll only transition to the sliding state from the sprinting state, and then we'll transition out only to the crouching state. In our sprinting state script, we'll add this if check for when we press our crouch button, and I'm also adding a velocity check so that we only slide if we have gained enough speed. Then in our crouching state, we're making a couple changes. The first change is that we want our enter function to behave differently if we're coming from the sliding state. Our normal enter causes us to crouch down, but since we're already crouching in our slide, we don't want to run our crouching animation from the start. Rather, we want to prime it to play at the end later on. So we use our new previous state parameter to check if the previous state is the slide state. If not, then we play our crouching animation as normal. If it is, we set our current animation to crouch and use the seek function to place our playback position at the end of the animation. Next, we need to check if the player is still holding the crouch button through our sliding state transition. To do that, we add a new Boolean variable to hold the state of our button. In our update, we keep our regular transition check for when the player releases the crouch button while in the crouching state. Then an else if for when the player is not pressing the crouch button and our released variable is still false. If both checks pass, then we set released to true and run our uncrouch function. Setting release to true means we only run our uncrouch function once and not every frame. Finally, in our exit function, we reset our released variable back to false. You should now have a functional slide mechanic when you crouch while sprinting with a tilt and field of view effect. All right, guys, if this tutorial was helpful, consider a like and subscribe to the channel as we're going to be covering a lot more. Thanks to all of my patrons who keep this series going. You too can get access to the written tutorials and the project source files by joining my Patreon. You can download everything there and you'll also get early access to my videos and sneak peeks at future tutorials. Thanks for watching and as always, keep creating.